here somewhere. All right, awesome. What's up, everybody? Uh, let me adjust this camera a little bit. All right, so uh, we're live here on Facebook and YouTube, um, and we are not in our normal location. You guys may have noticed that we're not, like, I don't have the big wall O violins behind me. Um, we are in our amp room because we're going to be talking about amps. What's up, Romania? Um, but before we start, and, and I don't want anybody to think this is going to be like an amp shootout or anything. This is, this isn't really like, hey, listen, all these, like, how do we, um, how do we decide which amp is the best amp for you? Okay, so we're not going to be playing a bunch of different violins. We're mostly going to be talking about how on earth, with all the possibilities of amplifiers out there, how do we choose the right one for you? And, or how do we help you choose the right one for you? You're picking it, not us. What am I talking about? Um, but the first thing, I want to get something off my chest. I've got a lot of friends on social media. I hang out on social media a lot. And a person who I really like and respect today, I saw posted that um, they're having a bit of an issue. Um, they're having a bit of sort of personal issue with posting things on social media because of all of the negative comments that are being made on social media. And then not just this person, but I hear like I have several thousand friends on social media. I hear from them, a lot of them, especially women, that there are some really, really, really awful and inappropriate behaviors happening out there. And I just want y'all to be aware, these are human beings on the other side of this screen. Not me, but them. Like human beings, okay? so. Trolling on social media, if you got something, it just don't, okay? Your mom may not have told you, I will. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all, okay? It's really easy. I, I see a lot of videos, okay? I like lots, lots of videos. I spend way too much time on social media. I see a lot of videos. Many of them are uh, not good. I mean, the, the, honestly, there is a lot of content on Facebook on Instagram, on YouTube, whatever, that's sort of sketchy. You know what you do? You just slide right on by. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to be negative. You don't have to be putting people down. Just scroll by. Don't be that guy who's the one that always has to leave a negative comment. I just blocked somebody today because the guy had left like five negative comments on five different videos alone. It's like, bro, you know what? You don't have anything to contribute here. You're, you're gone, okay? The other piece is sexual harassment is awful, awful, awful on social media. If you're a woman, you already know this. If you're a guy, here's a news flash. They don't want to see pictures of uh, you. Know, what I'm, know where I'm going with that? They don't want to see that. It's way too prevalent. There are amazing artists that are not putting their stuff on social media, that are not putting their videos out there, not putting their music out there because they don't want the negative stuff that comes along with that. So uh, here's a tip. If you wouldn't leave that comment on a man's video, don't leave it on a woman's video, okay? Uh, it's, it's like the, hey, you're hot. It's creepy, it's gross, it diminishes her as an artist, okay? She hasn't put that out there for you to talk about what, um, you know, how nice her arms are or whatever body parts you wanna pick, okay? This is an artist, comment on the art. I like the way you play. Hey, that's a neat looking violin. Hey, uh, that's an amazing arrangement that you've got there. Hey, you've got fantastic tone. Hey, you've got a nice butt. No. We don't want to hear what you think about a butt. We don't. Nobody wants to hear that, okay? You look hot? No. You sound amazing? Yes, okay? End of sermon. We're gonna get on amplifiers now. So if you play an amplified violin or cello or viola, whatever, amplified being the key word, um, you're gonna need an amplifier, an amplifier. Or if you're plugging into a house PA, that's another thing. If you need an amplifier, then this discussion is for you, okay? So how do we choose? There are so many options, right? I got a bunch of options sitting right here. How do we choose between all these? So we get people ask us all the time, what's the best amp for me? And this is, I just start peppering people with questions and it's not, I don't want to answer a question with a question, but honestly, the answer, what's the right amplifier for me, it depends. 
So let's go through a list of things that it depends on, okay? One of the biggest things is it depends on price, okay? Uh, I'm a musician. I have a budget. You know, I, I don't have an unlimited amount of money to spend on these things, though that would be nice. Um, so budget is important. It's one of those necessary factors. I will say this, though. Um, you get what you pay for. So if you can spend a little more, you will get a little nicer product. Okay, so when we're talking about putting a budget together for instrument, bow, effects, amplifiers, make sure you're sort of spreading that around so that you're not that guy that buys a $3,000 violin. I sounded really country right there. $3,000 violin, fiddle, son. Um, and then puts it through a $100 amp. Okay, that's just kind of silly. Um, it's, the problem is with your sound, your overall sound, what the audience hears, that's your product. What the audience hears is only going to be as good as the weakest component in your chain. I could have an $18 million violin if I run it through a cheap, crappy amp. You know what it's going to sound like? It's going to sound cheap and crappy, and nobody's going to care how nice the violin was. If I'd have spent a little bit of that money on a nicer amplifier, I could have gotten a better product. Okay. Now the other piece of that though, is that I can't take some little hundred dollar Cecilio violin and run it through a $2,000 amplifier and make it sound good, right? Your, your sound is only as good as the weakest component in your chain. So we want to spread this around, but it is important. Everybody lives with a budget. That's reality. Okay. But you want to try to make sure that you're spending as much as you can on your amplifier. Okay, um, so that's price. That's important. We carry amps that run from $89 up to a couple thousand on amplifiers. Um, do they get better as they go up? Uh-huh, they sure do, and we're going to demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, size. Size matters. Um, physical size of the amp. The physical size of the amp matters. If you are in a small apartment, if you drive a little tiny car, you don't necessarily want to be hauling around a Marshall stack that um, isn't A, going to fit on your stage, isn't going to fit in your car, isn't going to fit on your bookshelf in your house. Size matters, okay? Hello, howdy. Awesome. Thank you, man. Um, size matters. Also, so not just physical size, but the amount of power, the number of watts, right? If I'm playing for five people in my living room, uh, which I talked to somebody today, he's buying a violin for his wife. Good move, by the way. Um, buying a violin for his wife, and he wants an amplifier. Well, how many people is she going to play for? Is this, you know, is she playing, um, is she playing um, Madison Square Garden? Is she playing her living room? What's going on? And uh, says, uh, nope, pretty much a living room thing. I say her beautiful. A little tiny amp like this, this little Yamaha, would do you good. It'll be a good amp for you. Um, AER Compact 60. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's using that with a 60. They are popular violinists. Um, yeah, I would ask on the Electric String Players Forum. Um, that'd be where I would go. If you guys are not on the Electric String Players Forum on Facebook, you totally should be. Um, that's run by Trevor Dick, who's an amazing violinist out of Canada. He does a bunch of amazing reviews, too. Trevor's a good friend. And a, uh, and a really super talented guy. If you're tired of looking at my mug all the time doing reviews, um, you can check out Trevor Dick's channel. And he's got a, a number of really nice instruments and does a fantastic job on reviewing. His reviews are really different from mine too. So uh, even if you like my reviews, which I hope you do, um, you should watch his too because they're good and it's good to get another opinion. Um, and his opinion is really valuable. Um, so size, yeah, not only physical size, but the number of watts, okay? Now, not all watts are created equal. This is a five watt amp. Um, it's not real loud, um, which you would expect, right? But I've heard little 10 or 12 watt guitar amps that would blast you out of the room. Um, not all watts are created equal, but I will say that if we've got two amps made by the same company, say you've got like, for example, Fishman has the Loudbox Mini, and the Loudbox Artist. Well, the Mini is 60 watts, if I remember right, and the Artist is 120. Well, that's a good comparison. That tells you the 120 has twice as much power. 
Now, does it mean it's twice as loud? I say the nay. It is not twice as loud. That's not the way power works. The way power works is if I double the amount of power, that gives me about 25% more in perceived volume. Okay, double the amount of power gives me like 40% more SPL, sound pressure level. But it's about 25% more, what's up Mark? About 20%, 25% more uh, perceived volume. Double the power, 25% more perceived volume, okay? It also does mean though, that at the same volume, say I'm gonna be at 100 dB, right? It means that a bigger amp doesn't have to work as hard to get there which means it's going to have more headroom, and headroom means that you're, it's available for transients. Um, it's just, if you're, these solid state amps especially, if you're not pushing them as hard, you tend to get a little bit better sound quality, okay? Uh, so size, price, physical size, number of watts, those are important, right? Uh, the next thing we ask people are the number of inputs. How many instruments or tracks or whatever do you need to feed to this thing? If you are on a Yamaha, uh, this little amp right here has one input. You can plug one violin into that. You can't run a quartet through it. It only has one input for an instrument. It does, however, I just looked, uh, it does have an aux input. So these are all things that you want to check out on the spec sheet. Um, yeah, it's a good point. If you want to know these things, you got to find specs. Now, that being said, specs don't tell you what the amp sounds like. And we'll get to that in a minute. But number of inputs is, is important. This has one instrument input and one aux input. And what you might use an aux input for is if you're playing along with tracks, um, say you've got some backing tracks, you can run your backing tracks into this amplifier and you can turn those up or down. You can turn your instrument up or down and we got us a concert. Yee yee. All right. So number of inputs is important. Um, we've got one amp here, the Acus amp, that has three instrument inputs. Custom has one, the Roland has two, the Bose has two instruments and an aux. Fishman has two, well, it's got an instrument and a mic input and, whoops, oh no, go away, whoever was calling. Hi, little starling. Um, the Fishman has an instrument and a mic input and it has a Bluetooth input. That's another thing to think about, does it have Bluetooth? Um, I don't really like Bluetooth for performances, but for practice, it's great. Um, the Yamaha has an instrument and an aux. The Boss Katana amp has one instrument. That's it, one instrument. Uh, the acoustic image that's sitting here has two instruments. And the Acus, again, has three. So um, these are just a sampling of the amps that we've got here. But yeah, so one to two instrument inputs is fairly common. And an aux is relatively common. Uh, and then some of them even have Bluetooth, which is you know great for practice. Again, I don't recommend Bluetooth for performances. It's not, uh, it's not as reliable as a cable is. Cables are significantly more reliable, but um, hey, it's your deal. You wanna trust Bluetooth, trust the Bluetooth. Um, so number of inputs. The other thing is number of outputs, okay? It's not just the sound coming out of the speaker that's important. If you're playing on a concert stage, maybe you're using your amplifier as a monitor so you can hear that, but the front of house guy needs a signal from your amplifier. Okay, so you'll need to know, does this amp have any outputs? So, for example, um, the Fishman, let's flip this thing around, um, it has a mic or a DI output. It's got a DI here. So it's an XLR output. If you're playing this on stage, um, you can hear the sound coming out of the speaker and you can run a line out from here to your soundboard and the soundboard guy can have the sound coming out of your amplifier too so he can put it in the house, right? That's really nice. The Fishman Wildbox Artist, which I do not have one in here, it actually has three outputs if I remember correctly. I think because it's got two channel inputs, it has channel one out, channel two out. I think it has a sound output as well. Um, I should have looked at that to see if that's the case. Um, but I think that's the case. So if you're using two different instruments, say you've got a violin and a mandolin, I can actually send two separate channels out. 
So while I'm using the amplifier as a monitor for me, um, rather than sending the sound output out, which I could do if we're short on channels, if we have plenty of channels, maybe I'll send the, um, a violin output and a mandolin output, and my engineer can EQ or compress those or whatever differently, can put them in people's monitors. Maybe my drummer doesn't really like my mandolin playing, so he doesn't want mandolin in his monitor. He's like, yeah, you're not that good. Don't want to hear it. Um, in my case, he'd be right. I'm not a good mandolin player. Um, so there's any number of reasons that you might want to have those two channels outputted separately. And if that's what you need, then there are amplifiers that have that feature. So it's just a nice feature to know. So number of inputs is important. Number of outputs is also important. Um, does it have effects sent in return? Does it have a sub out? If you want to be able to run a subwoofer with your, uh, with your amp, some people do, especially if you're a cellist or a bass player, or if you're using a lot of uh, octave down effects, that's really nice to have. Um, we don't, I don't have it set up here right now, but the Fishman SA330X, which is a fantastic little amp, uh, it's, on a, it's on a pole, it's on a tall skinny deals, it's on a pole. Um, it has a subwoofer out, and when you hook up the subwoofer, oh, that one gets fun. It's a good sounding amp. Um, so if, if that's what you need, then it's nice to have. Um, the other question is, okay, so we started price, size, physical size, and number of watts. How many inputs? How many outputs? Effects. Let's ask that. Um, do you need effects with this? Are you running your own effects? Do you have a pedal board and you're like, nope, I don't need any effects in the amp. I got all that taken care of. Or you might say, uh, effects? Tell me more. Um, well, some... Some amps have effects built into them. Most amps actually have reverb. That's a super, super common effect. Um, other effects are getting more common. If you want some chorus or some delay or whatever, that's becoming more and more common in the amplifier. If you need the amplifier to have onboard effects, that's something we need to know is we're helping you choose an amplifier. Um, the Boss Katana series is fantastic for the number of effects it has on board. Um, I'm not going to list through them, but there's a bunch. And if you don't like the ones that come on board the amplifier, you can go to, I think, bossusa.com or whatever their website is. You can go to the Boss website and you can download more effects to your computer. And the amp has a USB connection on the back because it's 2020, of course it does. So you hook up the amp to your computer, you download the effects into the amp. You got lots of effects in your amp. Look at that. You don't even need a pedal board. It's beautiful. Um, you can save presets in this amplifier, which is really nice. So if I have two different sounds that I want, I can save those two presets. And then there's a foot switch that you can hook up and it comes out and you want your classical violin sound. Hey, I'm classically. And then you want to, you want to be doing some shredding, some rock and roll shredding. You kick the foot switch, pops over to channel two and screedly, I'm playing rock and roll. Okay, so that's kind of cool. That's a thing that an amplifier can do. It's nice. If you need that, well, there's the amp. Um, so another question is, do you need battery power? That is becoming more and more common, okay? If you need battery power, the Roland AC33 has it, the Bose S1 Pro has it, the Loudbox Mini Charge has it. Um, there are a number of other amps that have it. There are a number of amps that have battery power. Here's the thing. It's going to cost you both in money and in weight, okay? Um, I need to get rid of that. Um, so it's the amp is going to weigh more, and it's going to cost more. So you don't really, I don't get battery power just because I think, hey, someday I might possibly maybe need that. It's a little bit like four wheel drive for your truck. Like if you think you're going to need four wheel drive, then maybe it's worth paying for it. If you're like, uh, no, I live in New York City and I never leave the street, uh, probably buying four wheel drive is a waste of money. So if you, uh, if you think that you will use battery power on a semi-regular basis, then you can pick an amp that has that. Um, if you don't think you're going to use it because, you know, I play in a rock band, and if there's no power for the rest of the band, there ain't no point in me having a battery, then, uh, then hey, save your money, right? Um, but we've talked about all this. We've talked about price, size, number of watts, weight. Um, oh, yeah, we didn't talk about weight. The weight of an amplifier matters, right? Unless you got a road crew, my own stuff sucks. Um, if you don't have a road crew, then what the thing weighs 
matters because you got to cart this thing upstairs and all that. And yes, there are wheels, etc. But given a choice between two relatively similar amps, I'm probably going to pick the one that's a little lighter because I'm old. Um, and you're not getting any younger either. Um, sorry to remind you of that. Yeah, weight matters. So price, size, the physical size, number of watts, the weight, number of inputs, the number of outputs. Uh, do you need effects? Do you need battery power? However, the most important thing, I've gotten to this last because it's most important. It's weird. What's it sound like? Okay, the amplifier, what does it sound like? Amplifiers all sound different. It's not just that, hey, they cost different amounts and they've got different sizes and speaker sizes, et cetera, et cetera. They all sound different, okay? So let's play a couple of these different amps and you guys can hear some of the sound differences on these, okay? So I've got the Yamaha YEV. Uh, we probably sell more of these, not probably, we do. We do sell more of these than any other violin. Um, so because this is probably, the mo probably, there I go. It's my engineering background, man. We don't like absolutes. This is the most popular violin we sell. So why not let you guys hear this one through a bunch of different amps? Because I know I'm going to get a good question. So um, this is through the Acoustic Image Double Shot, which we just got in today. And I love this amplifier. This amplifier is banging, yo. Uh, $1,649. So uh, yeah, you would hope it sounds really good. And it does. Um, so yeah, the Acoustic Image Double Shot. Here's uh, the YEV. <laughs> sounds really good. I like that sound a lot, right? So that's a $16, $100 amp. This is really mean, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here's an $89 amp, okay? This is the custom KXV1. Now, in fairness, I'll be fair, I really like this amp for $89. Bucks. For $89, bucks, sounds pretty stinking good. <laughs> very fair to custom and I apologize it's like hey here are two dudes here's Matt Bell and then here's Jared Burnett everybody I'm gonna look pretty bad standing next to Jared Burnett um hope I'm not the ugliest dude on the planet but standing next to Jared I don't look so good okay so it's not really fair that I played the custom right after the acoustic image but that's those are sort of the two those are sort of the two ends of the price spectrum and uh you know People go, well, what do you get for the difference? Well, that's what you get for the difference. So, um, yeah, like we said, budget matters. If all you have is 89 bucks, you can get a custom KXB1 and it's going to do you fine for small venues, uh, a relatively inexpensive thing. It, honestly, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty bulletproof. It's a good sounding amp for 89 bucks. It's got a headphone out. It's got an aux in. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about was EQ control. It's got bass, mid, and treble. It's pretty light. It's pretty small. If those are the things you need and your budget's less than 100 bucks, that's probably where I'm going to point you. Okay, um, let's talk about the next one. Let's talk about the Roland C33. <laughs>
honestly, I like this amp. It's pretty smooth. It sounds really smooth. Smooth is sort of the first word that popped in my head, honestly. Um, 399 bucks. And this thing has a ton of features in it, okay? It can run off of batteries. Um, it's got two inputs. It's got bass, middle, uh, bass mids and treble on one. It's got bass and treble on the other. It has a built-in chorus. It's got a reverb and an ambience. It's got an anti-feedback. It's got a headphone jack. And it's got a looper. What? It's got a built-in looper. Um, Acoustic and Acoustic Image. Who would win in a cage match? We'll get to that. Um, the AC33 has a looper, yo. 399 bucks. So you can get a foot switch that goes to the back. It's just a TRS foot switch. And that TRS foot switch allows you... I'm tapping my foot like you guys can see this in the video. It allows you to start and stop your looper. It becomes a one-button looper. Um, for people doing stuff on the sidewalk, <laughs> pretty cool. You can run it off batteries. You lose some power, I think. I think you don't get as... You don't get as... You don't get as many watts. You don't get as many watts with batteries as you do plugged in. But, you know, it runs, right? So... The AC33, I had not spent a lot of time on this amp. And when I plugged it in today, I was like, man, I forgot how much I like this little amp. It's a great little amp uh, for the price. Again, it doesn't compare to acoustic image, but it's a quarter of the price of an acoustic image. So there you go. Um, the next one, let's just pop over. I don't know. Let's do the Yamaha since we talked about this. I'm probably not going to play all these amps today. Probably not loud enough. Let's make it louder. Woo -woo. Not a bad little desktop amp. I actually own a THR10, uh, which I like quite a bit. This has a couple of different uh, microphone models and stuff in it you can blend. That's a cool little feature. Um, yeah, um, it's, got, uh, it's got a couple of really nice features in it. For $199, bucks, it's a nice little desktop amp. It sounds good. It looks good. I like the little lights in there. It's got, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's got like little amber LEDs in there that look like tubes all warmed up. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It uh, Again, it doesn't sound like... An acoustic image, but you're not buying all the stuff. Jerry Burnett, I was just talking about you. It's all good, I promise. Um, how do I feel about the Yamaha 30? Eh, eh. Um, I don't think I've played it. So, yeah, this is a nice lamp. Oh, it's got a tuner built in, which is cool. Because um, if it's your practice amp, hey, you might want to tune your violin once in a while. Might want to tune your violin once in a while. Do I feel like I'm talking to you? Don't worry, I'm talking to me. Um, yeah, it's got a nice little, uh, it's a nice little amp. Um, uh, what else did I want to try? Oh, I did want to try the Katana. Let's do this. Um, and the question we get a lot is asking to compare the Katana to the Fishman. So we will do that. tune my violin. What am I talking about? Uh, so there's that one, and we'll go straight to the loud box, okay? Let's get them the same volume so it's fair. sound between those two right so this is the mini charge which has a battery in it so it costs a little more the regular loud box mini it's got the same amplifier it's the same speaker in it so that's i can use this to demonstrate um i feel like it's a little thicker sounding maybe than the katana uh the, the katana 50 is 219 the katana 100 is 349 uh this um i'm looking at my notes here the loud box mini is 349 
So between the Katana 100 and the Fishman Live Box Mini, they're about the same price. A few different features. The Fishman has more inputs. Um, the Katana only has one, the Fishman has two. Um, I feel like they sound a little different. Whichever one you like, that's what you, you You're the one that has to decide what you like. I can't tell you which one sounds better. Only you can tell you which one sounds better. Um, so it's that's what matters. Is if it doesn't sound good to you. If it sounds good to you, then hey, I'm happy for you. Okay. Uh, what was the other? Oh yeah, somebody had asked about, and it says I've got a low network connection over here on Facebook. Um, I hope you guys are still seeing this. Uh, if not, you just have to pop over to YouTube because YouTube appears to still be uh, doing its thing. Um, let's talk about the difference between the acoustic and the acoustic image. Um, and this is important, the difference between the acoustic and the acoustic image. Um, I feel like the acoustic is voiced more for strings. Um, so let's play it. I should learn how to play a little bit. Anytime you're relying on Verizon to get stuff done for you, I guess you get what you get. Um, so that's the, that's the acoustic. It's got three inputs, um, highs, mid-high, mid-low, low. So I've got four-band equalizer. Um, it's got a bunch of different reverbs built in. And it's got this thing called uh, HFS, which is uh, some sort of uh, like an ambience thing. Um, Sounds really, really good. Um, I like, Ross Holmes actually likes this violin one better. I like the bass one better. The violin one is $17.99. The bass one is $18.99. Um, so, so you just heard that one. Let's come over and compare it to the acoustic image. <laughs> Acoustic image is flatter. Um, Nick Schaefer, my man. I think the acoustic image is flatter. I think the acus is voiced more for strengths. It does some voicing stuff for you. Um, if you want, um, like what the German engineers of acus, if you want your strings to sound like they think strings should sound, then the acus is a fantastic amp. If you want to do your own shaping, um, I think I would probably go with the acoustic image. It is, it's, uh, I think it's flatter and it's a more transparent response. Um, so if I want, yeah, coloration is the big thing, right? So it's all about how does the amp color your sound? If it colors your sound in the way that you like, then it does what you want it to do. Somebody asked a question here, Mesa Boogie. Uh, Mesa boogies are super, super popular amps for violinists. They're heavy, they're big, they're loud, they're expensive. Um, if you need a high dollar amp that's loud as crap and it's gonna it's gonna go toe to toe on a rock and roll stage with a guitar player that doesn't understand that he actually is capable of turning down, um, then yeah, Mesa boogie is a fantastic amp. Does it does it get super super clean? No, they tend to be a little uh, fuzzier and dirtier, which, hey man, if that's, uh, if that's what you want, then that's a great amp. Um, I don't think they get, I don't think you're going to get quite the crisp cleanness that you would get with an acoustic image or an acoustic. Um, but they're super, super popular amps and they are loud. Um, so let's also talk about um, impedance. 
Okay, so that's that's the next place I want to go. All of the amps that we carry here, um, we carry them because they work really well with an, a violin plugged straight into that amp. Okay, and there's a thing called impedance, and it, and it has to do with the amount of electrical resistance in the circuit. Uh, violins are super, super high impedance instruments. Um, so, yeah, violins are super high impedance instruments. Just, I would love to. I'm not set up to do that right now. Every device that I have that I could use to play tracks, uh, you're watching me on that device right now. Um, if I thought of that earlier, I could have done that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we may have to do that some other time. I, I can't right now. I would love to do it for you, but I can't. Um, so, yeah, impedance is a thing, okay? So with a piezo pickup, which is what 90 plus percent of electric violins are, like 99 plus percent of the good sounding ones, uh, they have high impedance. Even if there's an onboard preamp, which lowers the impedance, is still considered a high impedance instrument, like way higher than an electric guitar. So these amps that we carry are ones that are designed to handle that high impedance and they're gonna sound good, violin, cable, amp, okay? Some people go, hey, can I plug into a Fender? Can I plug into a keyboard amp? Can I plug into a whatever? You gotta understand that every amp has different voicings, meaning that it has different frequency response. They also have different impedance ratings. So if you try to plug into a keyboard amp, a keyboard amp is expecting a very, very low impedance from a keyboard. Violins have very high impedance, so if you try to plug a high impedance instrument into a low impedance amp, not all of your signal is going to get through, and it's going to sound really weak and really thin and really reedy and really bad. Um, so we we carry we carry amps that can handle the high impedance of a violin. You don't have to worry about external stuff with these. Okay, if you want to try the amp that you got sitting at home, which I do suggest doesn't cost anything to plug into the amp that you've already got, but you might want to make sure that you don't have an impedance mismatch. If you do, you can solve that with a preamp, an actual preamp, so that's fine. Uh, but then sometimes you still have to worry about voicing. Violins, there really aren't any violin amps out there. All these amps are guitar amps, okay? Guitar amps are at least an octave below a violin in all their voicings, and they don't tend to be quite as shrill as violins. Sometimes guitar players want an amp that's really bright because it helps them cut through a mix, and guitars are not necessarily the brightest instruments in history. Guitar players, brightness, there's a joke there somewhere. Um, so a lot of guitar amps will emphasize some of those higher frequencies. If you plug this shrill, thin, bright violin into a thin, bright guitar amp, Whew, you are going to get people's attention and not necessarily in a good way. So you want to make sure that it's voiced the way you want it to be voiced. If you want a warm, rich, fat sound, you got to find a warm, rich, fat amp um, and a warm, rich, fat instrument. But never mind that. So um, you've already got the instruments you've got. If you're watching this, you're trying to find an amp for that thing. So know what the instrument sounds like. Buy an amp that's going to pair well with that and make sure that you don't have an impedance issue. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much what I got. So let's go back to the top for anybody who's here new. When you're picking an amplifier, there are some factors you want to consider. Okay, and we're going to ask all these questions when you when you call us and say, "Hey, what's the best amplifier for me? What's your budget?" Okay, that's just that's reality. We have to know what your budget is. The more you can spend, the better amp you're going to get. Okay, you want to make sure that you're balancing out your budget between instrument, effects, and amps. You buy a $3,000 violin and a $100 amp, that's no bueno. Okay, your overall sound, the product that your audience hears, is only as good as the weakest link in the chain. That's why it always astounds me when people spend a ton of money on an instrument, a ton of money on an amp, and then they buy some cheap little $50 pedal to put in there and go, hey, I think this is going to help my sound. Uh, I doubt it. $50 pedals that sound good, depending on what you're trying to do. But um, you don't you don't want to cheap out on any part of your chain. If you spent money on the instrument, if you spent money on the amp, don't cheap out on the stuff in between because it's going to wreck all that money that you spent. You're going to waste it. So you want to try to spread out the um, 
the money that you're spending, the instrument, the gear, the amp, okay? Spend as much as you can on an amplifier. The cheaper ones don't sound as good as the expensive ones, which you would kind of expect, okay? So price is important. That's a, that's a factor that we have to consider. The size of the amp, the physical size. You know, do you have room for a little Yamaha desktop amp? Or do you have room for a Marshall stack, okay? It, it matters. Also, the loudness, the number of watts. If I'm playing Madison Square Garden, uh, I keep picking on Yamaha, the little THR5 ain't gonna get it, okay? So it, how big of an audience am I playing for? Am I wanting to play for 100 people at a wedding? The Yamaha is not gonna do what I want it to do, okay? I need something bigger and more powerful. Um, size is important, number of watts is important, number of inputs is important. If I have a duo, say there's a, uh, I'm, I'm playing with Noah and we got a violin and cello duo and we want, to, we want to call in, we want to card in one amplifier for this duo. Well, that amplifier should have two channels. So we're going to have to look for an amplifier that has two channels. Yamaha is out, the boss is out, um, the custom is out. Those are only one input amplifiers. So if I need more than one input, I'm gonna need to buy an amplifier that has more than one input. How about number of outputs? Am I trying to use this amp to be maybe my monitor on stage and I need an output that can go for the house? Uh, the Fishman has a, uh, an XLR output. Uh, the Bose has a quarter inch output. Um, I didn't look at some of the other ones. Um, the Katana has a quarter inch output. But so you want to, if you need more than one output, say Noah and I are playing our show and we want to use this monitor so that we can hear on stage. Um, but we want our front of house guy to have two separate channels so he can turn Noah all the way up and me all the way down because I'm probably out of tune. Um, he can turn me down, he can turn Noah up. If we have two separate outputs on that amp, right? It's a beautiful thing. Um, does the amp have effects built into it? If we don't have pedal boards and I just want everything to be on the amp, then there are amps that have a bunch of effects in them. If I carry all my own effects, then I don't necessarily need an amp that has a bunch of effects in it. Uh, battery power, yes or no? Are we playing this wedding outside and we're 300 feet from uh, anything that has power? Man, it would sure be nice if my amplifier had a battery in it. Or if I'm playing in a rock band and the rock band can't do anything without electricity, it's kind of dumb for me to pay for a battery in my amp and to carry around a heavy battery in my amp because I'm going to be the only one. It's going to be me and a drummer. Hey, maybe that's great. But um, if you don't need a battery, it would be silly to pay for one and it would be silly to cart one around all the time because batteries weigh something. And then the most important thing is what does it sound like? Does the amplifier have a sound that you really like? Saw somebody on there commenting something negative. You weren't listening to me before. Um, there's one of these amps that they didn't like the sound of that amp. Well, then that amp's not for you. Um, there are people who do like the sound of that amp, and that amplifier is for them. Because there's no right and there's no wrong. There's only what you like. How you like that? That's a life lesson right there. Um, so, yeah, those are the factors that matter. Um, you are the ultimate judge. If the amplifier does what you want it to do, and it sounds like you want it to sound, and it checks all the boxes for you, then that's the amplifier for you. It may not check all the boxes for somebody else, which is why there's 50,000 different kinds of amps out there. So if you have questions about an amplifier, um, you can call us at the Electric Violin Shop. You can email us, info at electricviolinshop.com to help you walk through each of these things and pick the amp that's going to work best for you, okay? Y'all have a great day, and y'all be nice to each other out there. Don't make me come over there. Y'all be nice.